Hi everybody! Let's talk about conic sections. Circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, parabolas, they're all conic sections because I can take a cone and slice them up. We're going to talk about how to express them analytically or algebraically. How can we describe these with x's and y's and how can we use those equations and graph them? Let's start with a circle because we're most familiar with a circle. This of course is a circle that's centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 3. Hey, just an aside, did you guys know that's just the Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, the circle equation is just a Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals the radius squared. Kind of cool. All right, I can move this circle left and right by tweaking the x. For example, I can move it two units to the right, the center, and I can move the center one unit down. Of course, I'm talking about moving the center, but I'm moving the whole circle. So this, of course, would have a center at two, negative one, and the radius is still three. All right, so that's my circle. Now, an ellipse is similar to a circle in terms of the structure of the equation. In fact, we can consider a circle a special ellipse. But an ellipse typically has coefficients that are different from each other, coefficients of the squared terms. So let's say I had 4x squared plus 9y squared equals 36. That would be an ellipse because the coefficients of my squared terms, unlike in a circle, are different from each other. Okay? Now, typically the way that we analyze an ellipse is it's easiest if this number over here is equal to 1. So I'm going to divide everything by 36. I'll divide each term by 36. That's going to give me x squared over 9 plus y squared over 6 equals 1. All right, now I am ready to sketch a graph of this ellipse. Are you ready to do it with me? Here we go. So I'm just going to rewrite this. This is kind of the classic form of an ellipse that is centered at the origin, all right? So I'm centered at the origin. A is the amount that I go to the right and to the left from my center of my lip. So in this case, my A is three. So I'm gonna go three to the right and three to the left. Those are points that will be on my ellipse, okay? And you can check that. Three squared is nine, nine divided by nine is one. Oh, sure, that would have to be zero. Same thing if I plugged in a negative three. All right, the number under, well, did anybody want to catch my little mistake there? 9 36, that should be a 4, my apologies. Okay, so y squared over 4, that b squared is the amount I go up and down from the center of my lips. So I'm going to go up 2 and down 2. And those are two more points on my lips. Again, if I plugged in 2 for my y, that would give me 4 over 4. This would then have to be 0. Same thing with negative 2. And then I can join my points. And there is an ellipse. It's slightly elongated along the x-axis. So it's more eccentric, we say, than a circle. There's our ellipse. Now you may be asking yourself, hey, if I can shift a circle left and right and up and down, can I do the same thing for an ellipse? And the answer is, you betcha, you sure can. So for an ellipse that is centered anywhere else, our general form is, and this will look familiar to those of you who remember kind of the general form of a circle, x minus h quantity squared over a squared 
plus y minus k quantity squared over b squared, and then we have the one over there, where hk is the center of the ellipse. And a, again, gives you your displacement left and right from your x coordinate of your center, and b gives your displacement up and down. There's your ellipse. That's not too bad. All right, so let's write ellipse there. So we remember that. Now a hyperbola, again, has a similar uh, kind of structure, except that a hyperbola has the coefficients of x squared and y squared are opposite signs. One is positive and one is negative. Mm. So, let me show you the general form of a hyperbola, okay? Again, very much like the ellipse. You can see I haven't erased much yet, except one of these has to be positive and one has to be negative. In this case, when the x squared term is positive, you're going to have a hyperbola that opens along the x-axis. If instead, I'll just write it in a different order, if instead my y term is the positive one, it doesn't really matter where I put my x and my y, or my h and my k, you guys get the idea. When the y squared term is positive, your hyperbola instead is going to open up and down. Okay? Let's graph one of these just for fun. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's graph a hyperbola. Let's just say I had x minus 5 squared over 9 minus y plus 1 squared over 16 equals 1. Now I wrote that in my nice form. So let's see. The center of my hyperbola is going to be at 5, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1. And there are various ways to do this. I'm going to show you the way I was taught when I was in high school. That was a long time ago. It's very similar to an ellipse. This is uh, 9, so I'm going to go 3 to the right and 3 to the left from my kind of center. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go up and down 4 from the center. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if this were an ellipse, I would draw my ellipse, but it's not an ellipse. It's a hyperbola. And hyperbolas have these cool things called slant asymptotes that describe the end behavior. I don't think I... One, two, three, yeah, well, okay, you're going to be, you won't judge me for my sloppy graphing here. So my slant asymptote shows me the end behavior of this cool looking relation. And one way to do it is to create a rectangle through those points that I just made. And then the diagonals of that rectangle dictate the end behavior of my hyperbola. I used to love drawing these when I was a young whippersnapper. Okay? Now, the other way to think about it is just think, okay, what would the slope of these slant asymptotes be? Well, of course, I'm going up 4 and over 3. So you can just draw these slant asymptotes through the center with a slope of plus or minus b over a or your y displacement over your x, and then of course up 4 and left 3. So slope of 4 thirds and negative 4 thirds. And now I think to myself, self, is this a hyperbola that opens side to side or up and down? This x squared is positive, which means it's going to open side to side. You can always plug in x values to confirm that, x and y values. 
So you start right at that end point there of your rectangle and you draw a beautiful looking hyperbola that's getting infinitely close to those slant asymptotes. And there you have it, a hyperbola. Okay? All right, in terms of the parabola, the parabola, as we know, is distinct from these in that only one of the variables is squared. So, generally speaking, that is written in the form y equals a, which is kind of your stretching uh, constant. hk is the vertex of your parabola. Okay? I'm not going to graph one of these because I think people have more experience with graphing parabolas. All right, so that's just a very, very brief introduction to how we can analytically describe these kind of sections.